Hello, hello, this is Get Real with Eileen, and this is Eileen Felix. Thanks for watching this video. Um, today I'm going to talk about the horrifying experience I had in the hospital, Whittier Hospital in California, <clears throat> after I had my son. Um, I was induced, so definitely going to make another video about that. I was induced uh, from Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday he was born. And after my son was born, they moved me into a recovery room. And in the recovery room, there was two beds. There was my bed and then another girl moved into the other bed the next day. I was there for only like two days, basically. And um, it was very, it was horrifying <laughs> what happened. Um, I'm only laughing about it because I don't want to scare anybody, but I already know every time I tell this story, I scare the shit out of everybody in the room. So basically, uh, the story is going to be about over pushing, over pushing and the uh, consequences of having an epidural that we just don't talk about enough. And it's really sad that I had to see it in person. I've been talking about this phenomenon ever since my son basically was born. He's seven years old now. And every time I have the chance to tell this story, I tell this story. Where basically, um, I witness what happens to you when you get the epidural and you over push. So I literally saw the word over push once in the what to expect when you're expecting book. Um, one of my aunts gave that to me to read while I was pregnant and I read that to a T um, because it was so informational and I just wanted to understand um, more of what was going on in my pregnancy week by week and there's a pretty good really really good good introduction in that book I recommend any mom to read it uh, watch videos about it listen to the audiobook if you can't don't have the patience to read it is very informational about what's going on in your body because we just don't have enough, just don't have enough um, information about what happens when we're pregnant, uh, especially in me, for me in my culture, I'm from Los Angeles, and I'm a first generation Mexican American, um, my mom is from El Salvador, my dad is from Mexico, and we just really do not have enough information about what happens when you're pregnant. And before, during, after, and what to expect, how to recover, all of that. It's just, for some reason, doesn't exist. So, now I understand, like, what happened to the girl who came in in the recovery room with me after she gave birth. Why that happened to her. Um, because we, she has no education. We have no education on it. So, in comparison, I had an all-natural birth, right? I was induced... Um, but it was all natural, so he it was a vaginal birth. So it was an induced vaginal birth. <laughs> I cannot say all natural. <laughs> it was not all natural. Um, it was an induced vaginal birth. So without an epidural. And I had so many moms come to, up to me and really tell me, don't do the epidural, don't do the epidural. So basically... Um, I was good after I had my son. I did feel really tired. I lost a lot of blood. They did have to cut me open um, just to do that last push and to get him out for me to push him out. And um, <clears throat> she sewed me right up and she used a local anesthesia, anesthesia, ah, anesthesia to do it. Now, mind you, I'm comparing my birth compared to this a 19 year old who was recovering in the room with me and I'm trying to give you guys all the little details uh, to set up the story which is why I keep bouncing back and forth sorry about that and so this uh, I gave birth on Tuesday and she comes into my room um, Wednesday and I was discharged I believe Thursday so basically um, on that Wednesday she came in and, you know, her mom was there and the nurses were there who happened to be Asian. Now, I will be saying races because we have enough, enough 
um, what is it called uh, statistics. We have enough statistics to show that women of color, black women, Hispanic women, and then lastly, white women are treated differently in the hospital industries. Now, I'm not, I mean, besides the fact that that's racist, um, we do need to take into account the people that are going to be taking care of you in the hospital. Obviously, um, you know, different races have their own prejudices, prejudices, and the nurses in this scenario happen to be Asian. And I just want to put that out there because, just because. And so they were um, shooing the mom away right away. Um, the mom was very concerned. She looked concerned with the daughter when they brought her in the room. And they were just like, go, leave. She needs to, uh, you know, rest. And the mom's like, okay, well, I want to be here. Like, sh she's my daughter. I want to be here with her. She's 19 years old. And they were like, no, she needs to rest on her own. You need to leave. So they shushed the mom away. She leaves. The girl lays down. I'm laying down. I'm like, well, that's kind of crazy. Okay. And then... <clears throat> All of a sudden, um, I'm minding my own business. Sorry. There you go. I'm minding my own, and the girl starts to cry. She starts to cry and sob, and, you know, I just had a baby. I'm in a vulnerable place. I don't want to hear someone else crying next to me. I don't want that right now. You know what I mean? So um, after, like, five minutes of her crying, I, you know, opened my little curtain because there are these curtains that separate you two. And I was like, hey, um, are you OK? And she said, no, it really hurts. It really hurts. I want my mom. And I go, OK, well, then um, why don't you call her? And she said, I don't have my cell phone with me. Um, I don't have anything with me. I have nothing to call her. So I lent her my phone and I said, here you go. You could use my phone. You could call her. So she calls her mom and she begs her mom, come back. I want you to come back. It hurts. I don't feel good. And what this girl was experiencing is called over pushing. And basically this happens when you have an epidural and it numbs you to the point that you don't realize when you're pushing so hard to get the baby out of your body that you actually hurt yourself. And that's what this girl did. I know that now, looking back at this situation, I didn't know that at the moment. So at the moment, I I didn't go through that problem because I didn't have the epidural. So I didn't know what that felt like. I didn't know what that was. But this girl was hurting. The epidural had already, it, it came and it was gone, girl. It left, you know, like she didn't have any painkillers, basically. So because she didn't have any painkillers, she was feeling all of it right now. And so, oh my goodness, so <clears throat> she was crying, upset, and then I started to get concerned. So I told her, you know what, you should push the button on your bed to call for help because you're feeling hurt and maybe they could do something about it. Maybe they could give you pain medication or something like that. And so she said, okay, tell me why her button didn't even work. What are your hospital? Why are we so ghetto? I hope you guys did better by now, seven years later. And so, you know, with your hospital room didn't work. It's the button did her button didn't work, but mine did. So I, I was like, don't worry about it. I'll do it. I called them and they're like, yes, what do you need? Super rude, super condescending. Again, Asian nurses. Don't mean to bring it up, but they just happen to be Asian. And I happen to not be Asian. Let's just say that. So maybe there needs to be a little bit more mm, cultural appropriation classes in hospitals. Because if you have different cultures working together, they need to somehow create a bridge of respect. Okay. Obviously, they were being very rude and condescending. And I will also share my moments where they were rude and condescending to me while I was giving birth in a separate video, not in this video. So 
Um, I was like, hello, uh, the girl next to me is in pain. She needs help. Someone needs to come and help her. So a nurse comes in and she's like, what? What do you need? And the girl's like, it hurts down there. It really hurts. And as as con- as as much as you can as be a condescending bitch, um, the nurse is like, it's going to hurt, honey. You just gave birth. It's going to hurt. You're, you just gave birth. And then the girl started crying. And then she was just kind of like, yeah, it is what it is. And then she just walked away and left. She walked away and left. So the girl sitting laying down crying again. I'm over here like, wow, dude, I just gave birth. Like, this is not what I want to deal with right now. Why do I have to be Captain save a and like say something about it? Because obviously no one else is. So I called them again and I was just kind of like, you know what? You need to come and help her. She is hurting. And so she came in again. Another uh, a nurse came in again. And then uh, same thing. The girl's crying. And I'm like, look, you need to help this girl. She's hurting. She's upset. I gave birth yesterday. I'm not hurting. I'm not crying. This is not normal. Something is wrong. Okay. Something is very, very wrong. And you need to do something about it. Can you check her at least? Check her. And I hate that I had to even stand up because it's bullshit that I even, a stranger has to stand up and like tell the staff at this hospital, do something, do your fucking job. And it really makes me upset still to this day because, again, the numbers don't lie. Statistically, 44% of black women, something happens to them. Incidences happen to them. They get hurt while giving birth. 44%. Latina women is 24%. 22 to 24% Latina women get hurt somehow through negligence by the hospitals. Okay? Guess how far it is for white women. Guess how high. Guess how low. Okay? It's 12%. White women, it's 12%. So, we can confidently say that this is a race thing. Okay? We can confidently say that. All right? And after my experiences, I will gladly say that it was a race thing. Okay? So, she finally checks. And when she lifts up her dressings and looks in between her legs right away she's like oh not what you want to hear not what I wanted to hear not what the girl wanted to hear let me go get a doctor she says oh let me go get a doctor thank you for fucking doing your job doing something and so she goes gets a doctor doctor goes in checks it out realizes okay you had you over pushed let's get you a bag of ice they gave her a bag of ice she puts ice down there and then she really she needed to pee so she was saying she needed to pee and so they were like but you're not uh so we're gonna help you to go pee so they she gets up and walks out to go pee and as she walks across to the restroom there's like a trail of blood i'm sorry i didn't warn anybody but this might get gruesome so there was a trail of blood that she was leaving as she went to the restroom. By the time she got to the restroom, she fainted. Fainted, blacked out, dropped. She dropped, dead body, fainted. And so I had to call, press the emergency button and say she fainted, she needs help, the nurse needs help. Two of the nurses came in, helped her up, horrifying, helped her up took her to the bed to the bed and told her you cannot move you can't get up just stay here we're going to put a catheter on you so as painful as it was they put a catheter on her so like i said they picked her up put her on the bed and put some ice down there for her again no one talks about this stuff nobody talks about this over pushing is a thing the epidural isn't that great of an idea Actually, if you compare the pros and the cons, there's more cons than pros, which is why I didn't do the epidural. 
Now, did I know that this is how bad it was going to get? No, I didn't. I didn't know that's how bad it was going to get. And I, I've been telling my friends and everybody I know, left and right, you need to really look at the consequences, the pros and cons of your epidurals because there are things that can happen to you like over pushing. You can't move. It goes against our natural, um, you know, laying down goes against our natural, our body's natural way of using gravity to push the baby out. Um, you cannot move to squat when you have epidural and you're kind of going against everything natural, basically, um, just so that you can find some form of relief when the pain is natural as well. So that's another thing that, um, you know, this video is really much about like educating and sharing this story. And I really hope that girl's doing okay. Um, ever since I just felt so bad for her and I'm really glad that I stood up for her because it looked like they weren't going to do anything about it. Nobody cared to get up and do something about it. And yes, I do bring the race thing because statistics don't lie at this point, you know, and Black Lives Matter has just happened. But it's also, you know, it their numbers are the worst. They are. Black women's numbers are the worst. And I've talked to my aunts about it who are Latin. And they've also had situations where the hospital literally told her, go home. You're not ready. And she was like, I am ready. And they were like, no, you're not. Go home. And she didn't leave the hospital. She waited in the, in the room. And in an hour, she gave birth to her son, my cousin. So it really goes to show that it's like you're talking and they're just not listening to you. And I hate to say it's because of race, but it is. It is. And in Whittier Hospital, I left a terrible review on them on their Yelp. I talked. They called me trying to like talk to me about it. They forgot to give me food. They forgot. They kept insisting I get the epidural. One of the nurses even told me, oh, you really think you're going to be able to do it without the epidural? Like super condescending, super rude. Again, happened to be Asian. And it was like, why are you working at a hospital catering to, when it comes to race, catering to Latino women other women that are not your race if you're going to treat them this way you know there's no point for me to be a nurse in a place that i'm going to be racist toward the patients you know that's not cool so i understand this sounds very accusatory but i lived through it i was it was something that happened to me and i saw it with my own two eyes so i know for a fact that it does happen and statistics don't lie so, again, um, over pushing can happen when you have the epidural because your body has a natural system of warning you when you're over pushing during birth. And it happened to me. My body was warning me when the nurse was telling me, you need to push to 10. And she was screaming at me, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, my body was screaming at 7, stop pushing, stop pushing. And so I would stop at 7. Now, tell me why this nurse got upset at me for listening to my body. I'm serious. She was upset at me. She was like, what are you doing? Why are you stopping? I didn't tell you to stop. I told you to push till 10. And I was just like, Bitch, don't fucking talk to me. Like, er, stop. Because in the moment I was giving birth and she was not comprehending that I was following my body's natural rhythm. Now, my body was telling me when to stop pushing. And I thank God listened to it. Because if I hadn't listened to my own body, a.k.a. instincts, my own feelings, if I didn't hear my own body hurting in pain when I was pushing past seven, I would have ended up like that girl next to me in the recovery room. I'm serious. I would have ended up like that girl crying for my mom, bleeding out of my vagina because I, she literally pushed out some of her insides what happened okay inside to outside 
she pushed so hard it became so swollen that some of her insides became outside do you understand what i'm saying and because it's like outside like this there was no way for the swelling to go back in so she had to use ice to reduce the swelling reduce the inflammation and help herself heal this is my story that i witnessed after i gave birth and this is the reason why i feel so passionate about this course about sharing this information with everybody because everybody I meet, everybody I know who's pregnant, everybody that I know wants to have a kid, I share this story because it's fucked up that this happened. I witnessed it. And honestly, for the first like two years, I couldn't even talk about it without crying. I feel like crying right now. <laughs> and I couldn't talk about it because I was crying for her, like so traumatized. And literally, I don't even want to have another kid. I have one kid. I'm like, good. I'm one. I'm good. I'm one. I'm done. One. I'm done. <laughs> <coughs> excuse me so i hope that this helpful this horrifying story was helpful for anybody if you have any comments questions concerns you can um comment below please like and follow my page i'm gonna add more videos and i really appreciate your support so get real with eileen have a great day better than that girl did for sure you guys are already doing the next best thing which is literally researching it so I'm happy for you. Bye.